what is prayer? The word prayer has often been misunderstood and trivialized by making it into a way of getting things or an exercise that somehow makes God happy. My understanding of prayer has radically changed in the past few years. I consider it one of the greatest gifts I have received for my journey with Good Shepherd. I didn't get much out of my prayer life. I considered myself a doer, not a prayer. Yet I spent many years making sure little seven-year-olds memorized all their prayers so they were qualified to come to the table for communion. Recited prayers are especially useful in a child's spirituality. And rote recited prayer does have its place for all of us. Our beautiful liturgy each week is an example of ritualistic recited prayer. But personal private prayer, I just didn't see the point. I just thought I didn't know how to do it right. I didn't even know there was a path to a more mature, more meaningful spirituality. And as I began to read and study and learn about this, and as I began to practice stillness and meditation and then incorporated what I learned as centering prayer, at some point, and I'm not sure exactly when, I realized that prayer is not a formula or a dogma, but an experience of presence. Today's readings show an evolution in people's understanding of God and the meaning of prayer. In our first reading, Abraham is bargaining with a God who has to be persuaded to do things or not do things. It is a very immature understanding of the divine. And in Jesus' teaching, we get a more mature understanding. The apostles ask him to teach them to pray. And he tells them to pray to God as a father, someone you can trust and who cares deeply for you, not a vengeful, angry God who needs to be appeased and bargained with. But Jesus also taught a way of prayer beyond words. Go into your inner room, close the door and pray in secret, he says in Matthew. And do not babble on as the Gentiles do. And there are many places in the gospel where Jesus goes off by himself to pray. In today's gospel, in the story of the man knocking on his neighbor's door at midnight, Jesus is telling us that persistence in prayer is important. It is in the seeking that you shall find, in the knocking that the door will open. And at first glance, that seems a bit strange. But prayer doesn't change God. It changes us. It is a practice that allows us to realize that the divine DNA within ourselves they call this contemplation, which is an openness to and a union with God's presence. Resting in God more than seeking answers. It's an awakening to the spirit within us, Jesus tells us in the gospel, that the answer to every prayer is the Holy Spirit. That spirit is part of who we truly are. There is nothing we can do to attain the spirit, and we can't do anything to lose it. It is an unearned gift waiting to be desired and awakened within us. And the only way to get there is stillness. All the mystics from every faith tradition know this. It's finding our true self by the surrender of all the thoughts and worries, anxieties, and agendas that seem to constantly clutter our lives. We all have different temperaments and all need to find our own way and time to pray. But contemplation is an essential component. For some people, it might be 20 minutes twice a day at a particular time. For others, it might be sitting at the beach and letting go of thoughts by listening to the sound of the waves. For some, it might be while walking or like one of our parishioners, by vacuuming which makes his wife very happy. The repetition and recitation of the rosary, like a mantra that can help clear our minds of intrusive thoughts. It is hard to do for some of us. It, it was for me. I think that's why Jesus tells us persistence is so important. I can promise you that persistence pays off. 
ask anyone who has stuck with our Wednesday morning prayer. It is uncomfortable at first. Our minds don't like it. Our ego can't stand it. At first, it is hard to do for even just five minutes. But then after a while, you long to go there. And if we can rest in that presence often enough, eventually we will be able to do what Paul tells us in his letter. Pray always. Our lives then become prayer because everything we do is in union with that flow between us and God. Then, to quote my favorite Franc Franciscan, it's like someone is dancing with you and you're not afraid of making mistakes. 